Hey guys, this is Marcia here with another episode of the Lady Strong Fit Cast. Today I have a very special guest. I have Alicia with Good Vibes Therapy and Wellness that's located in Schaumburg, Illinois. Alicia, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. So the big question is this. How were two women who didn't cheat and purchase a gym franchise model, how were they able to spread their mission and purpose by empowering and transforming hundreds of women's lives through fitness, nutrition, mindset, and accountability with a micro gym business model of women only? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. We are Lady Strong Fitness. Yes, thanks for coming on the show today. So I want to just start off. I want people to just learn more about you and your company. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your company. Sure. So my name is Alicia and I have been working in the mental health social work field for the past about 14, 15 years. Um, I started out in child welfare and then worked in an intensive outpatient hospital in community health with a health department. And now I am in private practice. And how long have you been in practice for? So I have been in practice since 2012. Okay. Um, and lately I have been in private practice. I, before starting my own company, I worked for another company. So I've been in private practice now since 2017. I love that. And you guys have been in business for how long now? For a year. For a year. I love mm -hmm. that. So you and I had a sidebar conversation prior to this episode airing. And one of the things that I had mentioned is that a lot of people, a lot of consumers put a lot of emphasis on their physical health, but not necessarily on the mental side of things. So I want you to kind of elaborate on that, express the importance of how mental health is just as important as physical health. Absolutely. So, you know, over the past two years now, three years, going on three years, we have been experiencing a pandemic, which is something none of us have ever experienced in our lifetime before. And pretty much overnight, our entire world changed. I mean, you know, places shut down and schools shut down and it was something that was unprecedented, which changed things for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so more people now than ever have been experiencing anxiety and depression and are looking for support which is definitely something that is beneficial to people. You know, our mental health can impact everything in our life. It can impact whether or not we're able to work out, whether or not we're able to be productive, our relationships. And so really taking good care of our mental health leads into all other aspects of our life. Yeah, I like that a lot. So I, I know that you mentioned um, you do offer some sort of like promo if someone's interested in perhaps trying out your services. What does that entail? Absolutely. So we offer a 15 minute consultation and that entails me setting up a phone call with whoever's interested in services. And we talk a little bit about what the person may be struggling with, what kind of services they're interested in and how I may or may not be able to help them. There are lots of different specialties in mental health. And so I may not be the best fit for everybody, but I can usually help to guide someone to who they might be able to be a better fit for. Gotcha. That was my next question is what specialty do you actually specialize in? So my background is in social work and dance movement therapy. So dance movement therapy is my specialty. And I work a lot with people who have chronic pain. Mm. Um, that is the background. You know, when we have chronic pain, it also bleeds into everything. It can impact our mental health. It can impact whether or not we feel like we can do things, whether or not we can be engaged with people. So those are my specialties. I also have worked a lot in the past with anxiety and depression. Um, and I have experience with kids too. So I'm not familiar with that yet. I think you mentioned the dance therapy. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Now, pardon my, my ignorance here, but when you, when you say dance therapy, I actually think of dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so can you sh sh elaborate? What do you mean by that? Sure. So dance movement therapy is a field where we utilize movement or the body as an intervention to support our mental health and wellness. So sometimes when I'm using dance movement therapy, I'll use different breathing techniques, or I will guide people to be aware of different sensations in their body. Sometimes we talk about, okay, when you're feeling this emotion, where do you feel in your body? And is there anything we can do to bring breath into that or to cope with that in a different way? 
I really like that a lot. Now that makes sense. Thank you for that. Of course. Now, when you sit down with your patients and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think you mentioned um, you do offer it, you know, via Skype or Zoom virtually. So it makes it convenient that way. You know, they could do it in the comfort of their home. Correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely. Now, is there some sort of, do you stress uh, some sort of duration that you would advise or prescribe someone to perhaps consult with you? Is this just, a, I, I, I just want to understand how, because I honestly, I, I've done therapy in the past. And, you know, some people see that as almost like, um, I, I, I want to be careful of the choice of words that I use is almost like embarrassment, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, it's like, I, I, I take pride in that because it, it kind of puts me at ease in another mental state of mind. So people that are tuning in today, can you let them know, like, if they've never tried therapy before, like, what are some of the expectations going into it and also coming out of it? And like, for how long would you prescribe or recommend someone for your service? Absolutely. So every therapist is different, first of all. So each therapist, especially in private practice, kind of run things a little bit differently. The way that our practice does it is our first session and sometimes the second session is kind of a getting to know you session. So I ask lots of questions. I want to know all the like deepest, darkest secrets that you have so that I can know what you need and how we can work best together. But what I found in my practice is really that each person utilizes it the best. If they get to meet with me once a week, then you get to know the person better and you're more comfortable in your sessions. And, so, you know, we never know when things are going to come up in our lives. And so that way we can talk about anything that comes up. And often when you're coming to therapy, the things that you're wanting to work on are coming up on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And that gives us opportunity to, you know, talk about that and talk about possible solutions or coping skills that you can use. And then at the end of all my sessions, I say, okay, so what are you going to do for yourself between now and our next session? So in a sense, it's, you know, the person giving themselves some homework and mm -hmm. they get an opportunity to work on something that they want to work on outside. I really like that. And how long are your sessions? So our sessions are about an hour. Um, we schedule them for an hour and they last anywhere from like 45 to 55 minutes usually. Sure. And I know normally things remain confidential, but are you able to share, you know, some successes for people that have worked with you? Um, if that means like, you know, versus what they were before and then after they started working with you to kind of give people hope out there that, you know, there is someone out there like you to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, everybody is a little bit different and the time that they spend with me is a little bit different for each person. And some people have told me, you know, before I met with you, I never really thought that my emotions were okay. I thought that there was something wrong with me, but mm -hmm. now I know that they're okay. And it's just about how I utilize them and how I'm able to express them to people. Other people have been able to, you know, manage their anger because sometimes anger can take over everything and it's protecting something else underneath. And so they're able to dig down underneath what that anger is protecting and express that to the people that they love the most. I love that. And your demographic, I'm assuming, is more primarily working with women or men, adults, children? Mostly adults. Okay. Is it more, do you see persuaded more towards like 70% women, you know, 30 per, how does that, do you have like a ratio at all or? Yeah. I thinking about my caseload right now, I see, um, probably 80% women. Oh, wow. But I don't know that that is necessarily because that is my specialty. I think that it is really hard for men to talk about their emotions. Yes, that's so true. What would be your advice for someone that is maybe on the fence about seeking out some sort of help for anxiety or depression or anything of that nature? What would you advise? Or even for someone that has done therapy, but maybe that's looking to get back into it. Do you have any recommendations for them? I would say to try to touch base or talk to a few therapists, you know, trusting your gut, trusting your intuition. A lot of times when you talk to someone, your gut is going to tell you pretty soon whether or not that's the person for you. And the most important part of therapy is really being able to trust your therapist and feel like you can share what you need to share with them. I really like that. And how is our women able to get a hold of you? Is do you have like phone number, email, uh, website? How can they reach out to you? Absolutely. So our website is www.goodvibeschomburg.com. 
And our phone number is 847-220-7603. Um, or my email address is akimball at goodvibeschaumburg.com. I love that. So before we uh, end things and wrap things up here, again, I just want to kind of reiterate what we said at the beginning about, you know, the physical health and the mental health. Um, again, you know, a lot of our women coming in, they do put a lot of emphasis on, you know, bettering themselves physically. But like you mentioned when uh, earlier, you said, um, if you don't have the mental side of things, it's, you know, you're not going to have that physical side. So touch bases on that a little bit more exactly what you mean by that. So our mind really can control a lot more than we are aware of, mm -hmm. you know, it can control whether or not we have motivation, whether or not we have energy. Sometimes if we wake up in the morning and we're in a certain mood, then it's going to impact the rest of our day, how much we feel like we can do. And so sometimes just having some coping skills to combat that a little bit to remind ourselves that, okay, this is a thought. It doesn't make it true. I can do this, even though I don't feel like I'm in the mood right now, can really give us that extra umph to get through the day or to even, you know, reach that goal that we're working towards. Sure. I really like that. Thanks for explaining that a little bit more. I really appreciate that. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention at all to our, our women inside our community? You know, I think if you know, you're not ready for mental, I think mental health services are great for everybody, whether we're struggling with anxiety, depression, or, you know, just want to keep ourselves healthy. But if you're not ready to seek out mental health services, then meditate. That's mm -hmm. one thing that can help in so many aspects of our life, our physical health, our mental health, and it really helps to get us over that edge sometimes. Now people meditate differently. I do know that like there's all different facets of that. Do you have one way or the other that you would recommend on how to meditate for people that haven't done it? So for people that haven't done it, there's not necessarily any one way that is better than others. I usually tell people, okay, so you're going to want to try different things. Our mind is not created to meditate. It's a practice. You're going to fall off your bike a few times before you're able to ride. Yeah. So I tell people try it for just three minutes and then stop because after three minutes, sometimes we get frustrated or we get bored. And so it can be really helpful to have that time limited practice yeah. and try it a, you know, a few different ways that way and then go from there. I like that. That's some really good piece of advice there. Alicia, thank you so much for coming on today. Really. I'm hoping that ladies, if you're tuning in, please take advantage of the 15 minute consultation sessions. If you're not quite ready, try that three minute meditation beforehand, but thank you so much, Alicia, for coming on here. Ladies, thank you thank so you much for tuning in of another episode of Lady Strong Fitcast. Have a blessed day and take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. If you like this episode, subscribe to our YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or whatever your favorite place is to listen to podcasts. And if you really liked this episode, please leave a review for us on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.